Incoming Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said former President Trump made a, quote, mistake when he chose to dine with Nick Fuentes. Trump, as you know, hosted the white supremacist and Holocaust denier, along with the rapper Ye at his Mar-a-Lago resort last week. Trump later said he did not know who Fuentes was before the meeting. All right, let's discuss now with president of the uh, Zionist Organization of America, Morton Klein, and Republican strategist John Braybender. He was also a media consultant to Trump's 2020 campaign. Also CNN political commentator Ashley Allison. She worked for President Biden's 2020 campaign. Good to have all of you. Uh, Morton, let me start with you. Um, you've told the uh, New York Times that this last episode with Fuentes uh, for dinner at uh, Mar-a-Lago scared you, that um, this um, uh, mainstreaming of uh, Jew haters scares you. It, 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 does this mark the end of your support for Donald Trump? <laughs> Look, Donald Trump was the greatest friend for Israel in the White House ever. Uh, he moved the embassy to Jerusalem. He stopped all aid to the Palestinians as long as they pay Arabs to murder Jews. He recognized Jews' right to live in, in the West Bank. And, of course, he did the Abraham Accords, uh, making peace with UAE, Bahrain, Morocco, and Sudan. <laughs> so he's one of the greatest friends. That doesn't change. But having dinner with Kanye West, uh, who uh, publicly called for the death to all Jews, praised Hitler and Farrakhan, and uh, Nick Fuentes, who's a Holocaust and I are saying, forgive me, I urinate on your Jewish Torah. Jews serve the devil. All we've asked President Trump is to repudiate these remarks as despicable, and they have no place in America. That's all he has to do. And uh, to this point, he, he has not done so, because by not doing so, it legitimizes and mainstreams this sort of extraordinary Jew hatred uh, in America. And when you have a situation of enormous rise in uh, anti-Semitism and attacks on Jews, it's especially important for President Trump to publicly repudiate these remarks. But, Morton, he's had a week to do that. And you say he loves Jews, he loves Israel. <laughs> what do you um, uh, uh, glean from his refusal to condemn Nick Fuentes and Kanye West's comments? This has been his nature. He refuses to ever uh, ex express regret for a mistake he makes. I don't know why he continues to do that. But let me say something interesting. When President Biden publicly praised a, congre a member of Congress who's a Jew hater, Rashida Tlaib. Uh, Rashida Tlaib called Israel a racist Nazi state, end all relations with Israel, don't give Israel money. And Biden called her uh, a passionate intellect that God thanks her for being a fighter. Praised uh, a, a, an uh, overt anti-Semite with real power. And nobody said a word about that. So we have to understand that yeah. uh, you know, b both sides have, I hear you more. I understand, I understand the, the both sides stuff. But uh, I think the Democrats have come out and even uh, denounced people in their own party <laughs> many times and vociferously when there's anti-Semitism. But I just want our viewers to know something that, that uh, Victor, you've been pointing out. He's not just an anti-Semite, this guy, uh, Fuentes. He's vile on many different levels. He's also a racist. He's also a misogynist. Here are just some of his hits. As we know, he's a Holocaust denier. He's called rape, quote, not a big deal. He said segregation was better for African Americans. They had to drink out of a different water fountain, big effing deal. He has said women should not vote or hold jo jobs. He's also joked that women should be kept in line by giving them a vicious backhanded slap across the face. And so, given all of that, John, I mean, I know that you were helpful to uh, Donald Trump in the 2020 campaign. Would you still support him in 2024? Yeah, well, let me be clear on a couple of things. First of all, I was there, and I, I know the staff well. I worked a little bit with the president. I never once saw anything that was anti-racist or was racist or anti-Semitic in any way. If I had, I would have left the campaign. Uh, in looking at this latest episode, I think the big disappointment for me and a lot of Republicans is, all right, let's take the president at his word that he didn't know who this individual was. Why not use this as a great moment to speak into a, our universal belief that anybody who is anti-Semitic or racist, that we are going to oppose loudly and we're going to be united in that front. All right. Why isn't Instead, he, doing that? he uses as an excuse that he didn't know who he was. That's fine, only if you're willing to come out and get on the record about what you believe. Yeah, so has he lost your support? 
Well, look, it, it depends, you know, what happens in the next few days, in the next few weeks. I think the president has an opportunity to do here. You know, I still think if, if Donald Trump would have been reelected, we would have a better economy. We wouldn't have fentanyl coming up, killing 70 million or 70,000 Americans every year. We, I that guess. Putin I mean, there was definitely a fentanyl problem about before going 2020. But I do think this has hurt him politically, uh -huh. especially when you see how many Republican leaders have come out uh, right. and, and have asked him to apologize and so forth. I think this has made his uh, second chance at being reelected president much more difficult. I, it, it, Maybe it has another week, maybe another month. It sounds like people are holding Kyrie Irving to a higher standard than they are a former president and a candidate for president in 2024. Ashley, let me come to you. Does this um, spate, the spate of disavowal from so many people, sound any different to you than it did after Access Hollywood or Charlottesville or January 6th? So the long list of times we've heard Republicans say this is a bridge too far and then come back to Trump for their own political self-preservation. It does feel very similar. And I think, unfortunately, we will probably concede it, see this continue. I think you can tell a lot about someone by the company they keep. If you don't know who someone is and you're having a conversation and then you hear, I'm sure Fuente said some really important things um, in that dinner, the next immediate step is not, I didn't know who they were. It is I do not agree with that individual. I will never meet with that individual again. And I condemn the things that they said. And that's not what Trump is doing. And I think anyone who is giving him a pass in this moment, or frankly, has given him a pass many, many times before, while he was president and before he was president for saying heinous things, um, that's unacceptable to me. And I question why they are doing it. And, and again, I always say it is, putting the politics over the people uh, and what is right and just in this country. And I, I think people are playing both sides of the fence still because they just don't know if this is going to be the thing that gets Trump to go away. Ashley Allison, John Brabender, Morton Klein, we really appreciate your perspectives. Thank you.